Good morning. Good morning and welcome to St. Andrews River Heights United Church this morning from wherever it is that you might be. And wherever you are, we trust and believe that God is with you and God is with us. You are in God's house and so are we. Thanks be to God and welcome to worship. Karen, I would invite you to offer any announcements that we have this morning. Thanks, Noelle. Um, not to forget that it's St. Matthews, Maryland Community Ministry, One Just City is offering a virtual garden tour online. Tickets are available. It's a great fundraiser. Contact the church for more details if you need and support this ministry. Also, if you know of any pastoral care needs, please contact Charlotte at the office or me directly. Next Sunday is National Indigenous Day of Prayer and we will be remembering our Indigenous brothers and sisters. Also today, there's a service of prayer and, re and reflection united against Black Lives, uh, sorry, it's a United Church service that's against racism and Black Lives Matter. It's with the United Church of Canada. It's at 6 p.m. and go to our website for more details. Also, many of you may or may not know that today is Noelle's last Sunday with us. She is returning to the Louis Riel School Division where she has a position there where she's been on leave and will be the minister at Spirit Path. So we want to thank her for her ministry with us, for her creativity, for her originality, and for all that she has done while she has been present with us, sharing her ministry and her gifts with us. So if you want to send her an email and thank her personally, if you want to send her a card, do that. If you want to take note of the e-blast, there was a message in there in a way that we as a faith community can show our appreciation for Noelle. Thanks again, Noelle, for all your support and help these past few years. And now we move into the candle lighting. And again, I've got the pride cloth up because it's still pride month for the month of June. And so we mark this day and celebrate it and remember the lives and ministry of all two-spirited people and LGBTQ people. Today, we light the Christ candle, symbolizing that Christ is the light of the world and the light for us as a faith community. Christ shows us the way. We also light the rainbow candle, symbolizing as a faith community and people of God that we are open to all, that we welcome all, regardless of race, age, status, sexual orientation, beliefs. It symbolizes our openness to all. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the ways in which you show us your presence in this world, for all the ways in which you continue to expand our understanding of you and of your love for all of your creation. Be with us during this time of worship this morning, wherever we are, May we know that we are connected through your love, your peace, and your presence. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Karen, I will invite you to offer a children's story now. Now, to start with, I want you to, I'm looking out a window, so I want you to look outside and look up and see what you see. I see a tree. I see the sky, I see the sunshine, and I know that God created all of those things. I also look at the around me, and if you look at the earth, you see the creatures, the birds, the, the, all the animals that God has created. And if you look around in your house, maybe you'll see a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, a parent, and you will know that God, too, has created all people all races, 
everywhere. And in the story of creation, God created all things. And on the seventh day, God rested. It was a sabbatical. Now, during COVID, it's been easier to have somewhat more of restful time because children haven't gone to school. A lot of parents have not worked. And so we've been able to find ways of resting. But I want you to think about those days that were so busy and how could you have a sabbatical, a rest? What could you do to nurture your spirit and soul? Well, maybe you'd go with your moms and go for a walk. Maybe you'd go with your dad and go to the park. And in the park, maybe you'd see butterflies or maybe you'd see birds. Or you might go with your mom and dad and go to the park. Or you might go to the, the take your dog and go to the zoo and see all of the animals there. You might see an elephant. And you might spend time at home with your pets. Many of us have cats and dogs or rabbits even. Maybe you spend time with those pets. Maybe that's how you find a sabbatical, a resting time. Or maybe you simply play with a younger brother or sister. Rest, sabbatical, relaxation, time to nurture our spirit and soul from all the work that we do is important to our well-being. And so find ways that energize you and revitalize you. For some, it may be meditation. It may be taking time to spend with God to pray. And that's an important part of our spiritual life, of our life as a faith community. So take the time this week to find a way to nurture your spirit and your soul, that you may see God in nature, in your meditation, in your prayers. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that you are with us, that you worked to create creation. We thank you for all the creatures, all the beings, all the animals. We thank you for our families, our friends, our faith community. And we thank you most of all for you, God, who journey with us in these days of sometimes feeling alone. Be with us in, as we continue our service together and may we worship you at home and together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Karen. Karen and I are just about to read to us, read for us, with us, another telling of the creation story. And uh, we would invite you to join with us throughout the story. Whenever one of us says, and God said, you are invited to respond, it is good. The words will be up on the screen for you when it is time. Um, but yeah, we are just, we're going to go through that creation story and remember, remember what God said to us over and over and over again as God created God's world. From the first chapter of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and God called the darkness night. And God said, it is good. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And it was so. God called the dome sky and God said, it is good. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit and trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. And God said, it is good. 
And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And God said, it is good. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the water swarms and every winged bird of every kind. And God said, it is good. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God said, it is good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and God said, it is good. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made. And indeed, it was very good. May God bless to our understanding the meaning of these words. Wes and Chris recorded a solo for us this week. So I would invite you to receive this gift of music. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Some of you may know that in addition to being a minister, I am also a child therapist. And back when I was doing my training in this area, I needed to take some courses in brain research and child development. And I remember one of those courses felt very complicated to me. It was all about synapses and brain chemicals and the impact that stress and trauma have on those things. And as I said, it all sounded complicated and overwhelming. And it certainly felt beyond me to think that there would ever be a time where I might feel confident being able to offer support to children and families in those kinds of situations. And then this very scientifically oriented PhD psychologist added, just make sure you have a drum in your office. And if you don't know what to do, just start drumming a heartbeat. 
well, I could do, I could do that. She went on to say that the sound of a regular heartbeat is likely the most calming and healing of sounds, which is why she said just about every culture and spiritual tradition in the world includes beat and rhythm in their spiritual practice. We just read a version of the creation story, and I will confess that it was one of last week's lectionary readings. And since we read the creation story a few weeks ago on Affirming Sunday, I wasn't too concerned about focusing on the gospel last week and, um, and, and just not reading the creation story for us right now. But then I was watching last week's service from Charleswood United Church. And I will confess that this is one of the very cool things about this time. You can get just about as much church as you want by popping around the internet and watching all sorts of different services from all sorts of different places. Anyway, Michael Wilson, the minister at Charleswood was talking about the creation story and he said something that I thought would be helpful for us to hear today. He said that creation has an inherent ability to heal itself. Wow, I, I found those words to be very helpful to me right now. And I hope that they might be for you too. Somehow in the midst of all this stuff we and our world are going through, Creation, creation that we are a part of, has in it an inherent ability to heal itself. The Genesis version of the creation story reminds us of this over and over and over again with those words that repeat and repeat and repeat. It is good. And as I focused on those words, I began to hear them like this. It is good. 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 In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And there, in there somewhere was God's heartbeat. And in the great miracle of creation, God's heartbeat and our heartbeat became eternally linked. And I started to wonder whether reconnecting with those heartbeats might be one of the healing tools that creation is offering us right now. We need new spiritual practices in this time. We can't gather and when we are able to gather again, we may not be able to do many of the things that make us feel spiritually connected, like singing, like sharing food, like hugging each other, taking communion, passing the peace. And so I wonder, I wonder if we might be being invited to reconnect with that old ancient practice of beat and rhythm. When people drum together, I don't know if you've ever been to one of those big drumming events, but when people drum together, their individual rhythms quickly find a common pulse. People intuitively learn to listen to one another and draw together. Listening to the steady pulsing beat of the drum is an auditory reminder, a reminder we can hear about the presence of God in our complicated lives. Ultimately, It is about being in sync with God as members of the community who are God's hands, face, 
feet and heart in this world. Maybe actually drumming will not be our thing. I don't know. But I wonder if we might consider pausing once a day, now and when we can gather again, and find our pulse. And once you have found it, tap it out. You can tap it out on a table or your leg, or if you do have a drum, tap it out. And imagine yourself connected to the heartbeat of God and the heartbeat of all those around you. And through that sense of connection, perhaps the healing that we need right now will come. I am going to invite us into a time of prayer right now where we focus on the beat of our hearts, the heartbeat of God, where we connect that beat to the beat of everyone in the world. And so quiet your hearts and minds, take a breath and listen to the beat. Relax your face. Relax your body. Smile. And breathe. Join the beat. Think of the world. And as you do this, Pray for healing. See that all living forms have a heartbeat that keeps their lives connected. Seek the rhythm of God's heart and join it to yours. Amen. Oh, sorry. <sighs> well, as Karen said, hold on a minute here. Sorry. As Karen said, this is my last Sunday here at St. Andrews in this capacity. And uh, I have control over the equipment right now. So um, if we had been together in person, I think I would have asked if the choir would be willing to sing for the beauty of the earth, both because it fits with the theme and also it is my most favorite anthem and they are my most favorite people to sing it. But we are not together today. However, the internet has for the beauty of the earth on YouTube. And so I am going to invite us to reflect again on God's wonderful creation through the gift of music and imagine that it is our choir singing. Thank you. 
And now as we go from this place into whatever it is that the week might hold for us, we go knowing that we never go alone. We go with the blessing of the God who made us, the blessing of Jesus Christ who lived for us, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit who blows through the world at our sides. Go in peace. <laughs>